Alors, alors. Ah, I so this this uh, meeting was about talking about uh, uh, globally 3D use and uh, 3D in QGIS especially, but uh, more about use cases and what people are uh, doing with 3D currently and uh, what so they would like to do uh, in the future. Um, I got some example of uh, a few applications we are building currently with. Uh, uh, with QGIS and 3D, but not with uh, QGIS 3D. And uh, I think during I talk, uh, Martin will be able to uh, show something about uh, uh, about the 3D. He, he did uh, 3D implementation. He did in in QGIS. Uh, so uh, maybe I can start by showing you uh, a few things we are currently doing, so that you get an idea of uh, uh, where we would like to go. Um, so I try to share my screen. Okay, so that's me. Hi. <laughs> and uh, where is screen sharing? Share screen. Desktop one. And uh, so, do you see that? So that's an example of, uh, of an application which is uh, based on, uh, on QGIS, uh, which is dedicated to uh, mining uh, for, for big mines, so uh, globally geological mines. And uh, what we do is uh, having a, a 2D view of, uh, uh, so this is actually uh, the open mine, with, uh, which is divided in a grid. And uh, then, you have, um, on top of that, uh, you have a 3D view of the same area uh, where you can uh, edit data and uh, having different colors and different symbols according to uh, attributes of the data. So the data is stored inside the Polsys database and uh, we visualize it uh, either in 2D or in 3D uh, here below. I think I have another example of that. Uh, so this is uh, the same application and you can see here that we have uh, the 2D view and um, the, the features are not that complicated so we implemented that as a plugin uh, which is based on uh, OpenGL and uh, it's not QGIS 3D per se because we started the application uh, before we, um, uh, before uh, Martin started uh, the 3D work on, on QGIS. And as you can see, you can select uh, different kind of data you want just as, it, uh, as if it was uh, uh, 2D data. And, um, and then you can also edit the data so you can click on some features and they will uh, appear or disappear according to uh, what you want to do. So that's an example of an, uh, of an application. Uh, we are still developing that, and the idea would be to integrate that into the 3D framework, which is currently in QGIS. So that's the first example I wanted to show. And uh, another example, which is also in the same domain, is uh, for geology as well. So this is also a, a QGIS plugin. So you don't see QGIS, but it's, uh, it's there. And uh, this is a volume 3D uh, underground volume reconstruction from uh, wells information. So uh, the little yellow uh, parts you can see, uh, the yellow lines you can see are uh, the wells uh, information. So uh, you dig uh, down the ground and then you have information about what kind of, um, of minerals there are. And from this information, we can reconstruct in 3D as a full model of uh, the mineral volumes uh, with uh, all the parts are, uh, which are interesting for us uh, depending on the kind of uh, mineral you're looking for. And uh, so this is also stored in a PostGIS database uh, with 3D elements. And um, then we uh, display in the same way we did with the last application, we display that in a, a OpenGL window uh, which allows uh, the user to navigate through the 3D uh, model. So this is uh, mainly triangulated data. And uh, yeah, you can also 
as you see, you can edit the data, change uh, a few things, uh, you can delete parts of it, you can delete uh, edges and it will change the volume by recomputing it. Everything is topological and uh, again the idea would be able to integrate this kind of application into uh, the 3D uh, interface of, uh, of QGIS. So this is mainly what we are doing uh, in 3D right now as for uh, QGIS, uh, as far as QGIS is concerned. And I'm gonna show you as well another thing which is uh, the items project we are working on, which is in this case a web application. So it's not uh, inside QGIS, but uh, it's interesting to see um, the kind of uh, 3D views we want to have as well. Uh, on the web and uh, which we may at some point integrate with QGIS too. So uh, this is basically a globe with uh, uh, elevation and uh, you can have a lot of different things on top of um, uh, of the data and kind of data. I mean, uh, here you have point clouds, uh, point clouds with auto photo, uh, 3D buildings, uh, for example here, 3D buildings with textures, uh, as well, and uh, specific um, effects uh, in post-processing. So this is all kind of things you can do with uh, this uh, framework, uh, which is a WebGL framework. And it would be interesting as well to be able to integrate uh, either this kind of feature directly inside QGIS or an interaction uh, between um, this uh, open source uh, web framework and QGIS. For example, uh, to import or export data to uh, integrate the same uh, formats we use for the web inside QGIS and that kind of thing. So at at Oslandia, that's mostly what we are working on uh, currently in terms of uh, of three D, and uh, the the applications are pretty various, and uh, that was what I wanted to show and to share with you. Uh, to uh, discuss it and uh, see what kind of uh, use cases you could have and in which direction we should work to uh, improve 3D support in, uh, in QGIS. So, that's all for me. Do you have any specific question regarding this? We all we already use the QGIS to 3JS uh, from from the QGIS. So we simply take the layer and and use the plugin QGIS to 3JS. But what we need is um, to to be able to to change the values we use them for. for uh, we are working for using Glow. Any so we're using a globe uh, it's Brighton and then choose to WebGL. And then we operate the KDMG. Uh, yeah, I should do it right now. Can you hear me? No. <laughs> Not a lot of yes, players. we can hear you. You can hear you. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, since Brighton, if I, as far as I remember, you were using Globe or some modification Globe uh, thing, uh, and then moved to WebGL. And now uh, we have a uh, start of a 3D engine inside, QG, uh, inside QGIS. So the, the question is, um, uh, okay, when you start with WebGL, uh, the, the QT version was uh, the, the, the weren't the 3D engine, 3D, 3D engine inside QT. So what, now what would be, uh, because a web uh, gel engine is uh, has a, a longer history than uh, the 3D stuff of uh, Qt, what is would be better to to uh, to have in, in investment in 
in giving a bridge among the WebGL and QGS or uh, or to the Web uh, 3D, uh, the 3D engine of Qt. Qt. <laughs> I don't have a DLL. Yeah, I, I don't have any uh, fixed answer to that. Uh, what we know is uh, we have use cases where uh, web applications are needed because you uh, it's more about um, having your data available for a lot of different people who can't afford to install a specific application. So that's exactly the use case for web. For example, you have uh, a street view like uh, data uh, with point clouds, uh, imagery, and a lot of different <coughs> things, and you want uh, you want thousands of people to access this data. So as a web part is really, uh, really convenient for that. It's made for that. So we would do that with a web application on iTunes. The iTunes project is exactly uh, for this kind of use cases. Uh, whereas uh, some applications are more about uh, data exploration, data creation, uh, connection to the database to create data, do data analysis. And I think in this case, uh, QGIS and, and having a 3D in QGIS is more, uh, much more tailored to that. Um, so both, I think both are important and, and sort of different use cases. So uh, in terms of uh, development, uh, I can speak for Islandia. We are developing both. Well, I mean, we have uh, we are developing the uh, the web uh, client and and web application right now, and it improves uh, regularly. Uh, as for uh, QGIS 3D, we have plans to uh, improve as well and to work with Martin to uh, integrate more uh, 3D. And I showed the application uh, just before, and which are not integrated into the work Martin did. Uh, but uh, at some point, we want to merge that and make that converge so that every application, desktop application we have, uh, which needs 3D, will use this uh, framework, which is, uh, I think, QGIS, um, QT 3D has changed a lot. Uh, what could be done. Uh, I mean, before that, we had uh, we tried Globe, and it was not uh, a really good solution in terms of uh, features, and especially in terms of uh, uh, framework, which was used because it was pretty complex and uh, a lot of dependencies and all. Uh, so nowadays, I think we have a much better solution with uh, a Qt 3D. But for that, uh, I will let Martin speak about. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I would just probably add, as also uh, Vincent was saying, that um, yeah, with the desktop and web platforms, there are such a huge differences between those um, approaches and also like uh, expectations of users. Uh, so just like we developed uh, desktop QGIS, um, at the same time, we are not trying to conquer the world with some um, web JavaScript library for display of maps and so like um, having all that uh, functionality for web. Um, so uh, similarly, like the QGIS 3D uh, as it is right now is probably going to stay focused mostly on uh, the desktop functionality. Um, and for for the like web 3D uh, stuff, uh, there will be still probably some different solutions uh, which are probably like better suited uh, for for that kind of use. Especially that uh, like just from the technological point of view, our code is C++ and cute. While on web, you just need to have everything in JavaScript. Maybe over time with all the projects like the web assembly and so on, it would be possible at some point to take QGIS source code, compile it into JavaScript and uh, run QGIS 3D even in a browser, but uh, it's still probably sound of the future. And um, yeah, for the other stuff, yeah, what, uh, Vincent was showing those are really nice uh, example applications where the QGIS 3D could be be nicely used. Um, what else would I wanted to say? Yeah. So and for 
for like future plans of uh, QGIS 3D? Uh, well, so right now, probably the ones you, uh, that have tried it uh, so far, uh, you know that it's uh, still fairly basic, like it works somehow and uh, it's possible to get something done, uh, but um, still plenty of nice features missing. So, um, yeah, probably uh, from the people who are around here, uh, you probably know that we have started this uh, crowdfunding campaign recently uh, to get some more features into QGIS 3D. Um, so that one, the campaign, it's going to run for another four weeks, I think, or so. We, uh, we are trying to get about uh, 10,000 euro um, for the development. Um, what we would like to get there is like the improved camera support, like for the advanced controlling, um, uh, improved support for terrain, or skybox for, uh, there is quite a bunch of features that are, that we took like from the top of our wish list and uh, put it there. Um, so yeah, from my point of view, the plans is that uh, um, like right now we don't have uh, at like Lutra some particular clients that would be saying like, yes, we want this or that or that. And uh, we have funds uh, to do that. So we are kind of uh, waiting what's going to happen, whether the crowdfunding will be successful and we can add some uh, more features, or if not, then uh, the development will probably move anyway, but probably in a slower pace or uh, someone else like Oslandia would be um, developing the features they need to, like, let's say, port the applications they have already done um, so that um, everything is working for them. So, yeah, just to complement, we were a bit surprised uh, about the crowdfunding things. Uh, well, the timing, I think, is not really good for that because of QG3, but that's a thing. Uh, the, what I wanted to say is that um, we have been working on 3D for a while now in Polish and then uh, in QGIS and on the web. One thing we get from that is that it's difficult. Uh, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, there are a lot of things which are uh, very uh, much more difficult to do in 3D than in 2D. Uh, you can say uh, it's not one uh, twice the development, it's maybe 10 times the development to do this more or less the same thing in 3D than and in 2D. So that's a very important point to keep in mind is that uh, the, the delays and the amount of development and the funding attached to that uh, is not going to be small. It's a, it's a huge work even if we want to have some simple features and that's important to keep in mind. Um, so we were a bit surprised for, by the amount of money as well as you require because we, we did some, uh, some evaluation of what would be needed to have a, a 3D implementation for basic stuff like what we do in our, um, in our applications here. And uh, we evaluated something like uh, between 100,000 euros and 200,000 euros of work uh, to have something which is like basic stuff uh, you would expect from a 3D GIS, uh, which is, that's not something uh, which is low, it's much uh, to the higher side of, uh, of QG's project. But uh, at the same time, uh, while we don't have any project directly funding uh, 3D, uh, upstream 3D for QGIS, we have clients who are interested in having 3D in QGIS, uh, so it may happen, and these clients can have <coughs> a lot of money as well. So the kind of application I showed you are not that big application, but that's for clients who have, do have money. So um, uh, I understand the, uh, the uh, strategy of uh, Lutra to get something uh, which is like um, a first product to get people to uh, get involved and fund that more. But uh, I think we should be prepared to 
uh, to have something which is uh, yeah, we we'll, to realize that it's something which will cost a lot in terms of resources, and more than that, it's also something which is very demanding in terms of uh, expertise and technology. And that's not uh, as easy to do a 3D rendering than uh, it is to do 2D rendering. And uh, a few things which is, you would think is very easy, like, uh, I don't know, rendering lines on the, on the 3D terminal, that's awfully complex. Uh, but you would think it's easy, but actually it's very, very complex. And uh, so we have uh, this uh, Vincent Mora, which, who you may know, who is a kind of expert in 3D and uh, is doing that. Uh, a kind of application and stuff. So we intend to uh, invest in 3D um, uh, later in the project, but uh, we were waiting for QG3 to be out first and uh, uh, do bug fixing. And whenever we have a, a good basis for QG3, then uh, uh, switch to uh, investing more into uh, 3D development. Uh, but that's not for now, at least from Australia point of view, that's not going to happen in the next month. It's more uh, end of the year or next year that uh, we may have some uh, involvement. In that. That's more or less. Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with uh, Vincent that uh, uh, in general, the development on, of anything related to the 3D views and so on requires like yet completely another level of expertise, which also like uh, for me it took quite a long time to kind of uh, understand uh, all of those things and implications. Uh, so yeah, it, uh, it's probably also a bit more difficult to get uh, other developers on board. Um, in in terms of the um, uh, funding and the amount of funding, um, also agreed the like the amount that we are trying to raise is um, let's say uh, very optimistic <laughs> amount <coughs> to uh, get some like the list of features uh, uh, we want to do done. Um, at the same time, like right now. We kind of take it as a fun project that's uh, not uh, going to like make us rich or anything like that. It's mostly to kind of uh, um, cover the development costs and like the expenses uh, to to create something like that. The, the overall problem with QGIS um, 3D, I would say, is that. Um, um, it's probably very difficult to uh, find any companies willing to fund anything there when um, it's still very far from like what they want uh, to use it for and what kind of features they expect. So um, also that's why like the initial um, implementation uh, was made uh, thanks to the QGIS.org grant. And this one pro uh, hopefully uh, could be done with the uh, crowdfunding so that with like um, various small steps, we can uh, slowly get some, let's say, critical amount of functionality uh, there when it starts to be interesting also for other companies to start using it and realize, okay, now we can maybe fund uh, this feature and it gets better fund that feature so that um, but maybe like at this point it's still in such early stages that uh, the companies are simply not that interested to uh, put the money into it like if we also think about the QGIS from like several years ago uh, there was hardly anyone who would be willing to pay for features in QGIS 1.0 but uh, now that has changed so my hope is uh, that similar pattern could um, work in this area as well to kind of bootstrap uh, the support somehow and then yeah get also other companies to fund the individual pieces that they are interested in 
Uh, just to note again about the crowdfunding, I think um, it has a, also uh, it's, it's very good for bootstrapping and ours because that's uh, the initiative we need for uh, to just uh, take uh, basic things done and uh, and bootstrap uh, then other funding and, and all. But I think we should be careful with the perverse effect of that that people, uh, if we don't really mention that the work to come uh, will be big and important and will cost a lot of money, uh, people will mm -hmm. think that, uh, okay, implementing 3D uh, in QGIS costs like 12,000 euros or something like that, which is actually uh, not even 10% of what is needed for the, for the basics. So uh, we should be very clear in saying, okay, that's really a bootstrapping uh, step and that's a kind of a, a donation to initiate things, but the real costs are much higher than that so that people wanting to fund uh, features afterwards are really aware of uh, what are not... Um, surprised by uh, the real price they're going to pay for, for the features, I think. Uh, but that, that's the case not only for 3D. I mean, that's the case for every uh, new feature we want to uh, initiate and cut fund uh, with very low rates and, um, and also uh, yeah, not to, not to uh, propagate a false message about the value of things. Otherwise, we end up with developers being burned out because they, they overwork and they're not paid for that. So we should be very careful with that, as there is a, like a social risk here, uh, which is, from my point of view, uh, under-evaluated. So. I think 3D is not only hard for the developers, but also for the users to use. <laughs> for me, example, I, I still struggle with the navigation in Kiwi 3D. <laughs> After two or three seconds, I'm off my <laughs> little area of interest, and, <laughs> and then I have to return to the initial state because <laughs> it's way too fast. Uh, the movement in <laughs> uh, I told you already, <laughs> and it's basically in all of the navigation, not all, not in uh, so for what rotating and. Uh, <laughs> And the other thing I still miss a lot in the navigation, but it's in it to do for the crowdfunding, I think, is being have, having an elevator mode, so staying at the same position and just uh, change the altitude. Uh, below, uh, mm -hmm. looking below the terrain, of course, that's important. For <laughs> but yeah, but I think that's on the radar already. So. <laughs> Yeah, another point uh, we didn't discuss it, what are the, the needs, the future needs for users? And uh, we see a lot you, uh, of users trying to start editing 3D data. This is the big missing part, either for pipes in water network, they want to just edit the Z value and have a way to look at it and see if it's, uh, if it's a correct value. And uh, the only way to do this would be to do profiles and edit the profiles in 2D or have a way to edit in 3D like uh, the, the plugin Vincent showed us. And if we try to plan common roadmaps, I think we, we should have this in mind because this is where uh, desktop applications uh, are the best at it's edit editing data, I think. Uh, yeah, it, it's true that uh, until now, QGIS 3D has been concerned uh, only about the 3D views, and uh, for good reason. That uh, the, as we were talking about, the 3D is like much more difficult than um, other usual stuff. 3D data editing, I would say, is like another huge step uh, up. Like. Uh, I don't know if any of you have, uh, for example, tried to use some 3D editing or modeling software like Blender or so, and uh, it's really, really uh, difficult to get started. Once you kind of know your way and how things are uh, done, then it starts to make a lot of sense, but the entry barrier is really quite high. 
And so for the 3D editing in QGIS, I guess we would get to like uh, similar uh, problems. Uh, well, we, those are problems. <coughs> it's, it's just simply the, the logic and everything around it is just much more complicated. So um, that's why. And while we are, let's say, uh, thinking about the future, also another very interesting bit is to think about like 3D um, processing algorithms, uh, let's say. So like uh, guys in, at Oslandia, they have already done quite a lot of stuff a longer time ago with the SF uh, Seagull library for like the 3D like unions and intersections and that kind of stuff. Um, and eventually it will be probably very nice to have a, a set of 3D algorithms in the processing toolbox for all sorts of things. Um, and yeah, that would be another thing. Also, um, this kind of data preparation algorithms. So like when, um, you let's say have some data you want to publish on the web uh, usually you also need to do some processing so that everything is in like simple to use formats uh, on, for the javascript frameworks um, it's also something to like think about for the processing algorithms but uh, that, that's i would say again quite independent uh, task and uh, complicated one. <laughs> I have one more question about uh, uh, going back to the basics of the, what, what exists already. Uh, my terrain is quite detailed, and uh, so it's a, a couple thousand rows and columns, and the triangulation when loading the project takes a while, so I don't know. You can see it's it's progressively doing that as a separate thread probably mm -hmm. and because my terrain only changes every five years or so why couldn't this be uh, or could it be stored or uh, cached somehow so it doesn't have to triangulate each time I open a project is that on the radar as well or? Um, yes possibly uh, Mm, there are definitely more ways how this uh, could be improved. This like uh, storage of the individual uh, tiles uh, in some kind of cache, uh, that's one option. Another one, of course, is also right now, if, if you like, want to zoom in somewhere directly, um, the the like loading of the tiles and the uh, uh, pieces of the map is done in a way that you first need to have all the like um, bigger tiles at that location um, available so that uh, even if you know that you are just going to look at some very tiny uh, tiles all the uh, like bigger and bigger and bigger tiles still needs to be prepared and rendered with the 2D rendering and so on. And that's also is what uh, takes uh, quite a lot of time. So maybe like 90% of the time of the processing could be like thrown away completely. Uh, if we know that you are zoomed in to this area and we just need to render this area. So yeah, but this is just a te technical detail and um, just to summarize it, there are ways definitely how to how to improve the performance there have been also some concern from others um, especially if you use um, like um, tile like raster tiles from some web services like uh, from some xyz um, tile servers then it also gets quite slow and that's because with normal map canvas there are like um, all the requests coming out uh, at the same time and then 
coming quite uh, quickly, while with the 3D they go basically one tile uh, by tile. So uh, then the latency is like much more pronounced. So yeah, definitely there are things we can optimize. Uh, it's just again a matter of uh, finding time to to do that. So it's not something that would be like a problem that we can't solve. It's just that uh, for now, like, and this is just one thing. There are various other things uh, in the internal parts where things could be maybe done more efficiently, faster, and so on. But uh, just because there are so many things that uh, one can keep improving, um, I was just trying to focus on the key bits to get something running and uh, have it available. Are there any questions from in the Zoom room? Okay. Someone's got a question? Or? No, it seems. I wanted to point out as well that uh, we should not forget that um, um, QGIS is based on GEOS for geometry uh, storing and processing, and GEOS does not have any 3D support. So if we want to have real 3D support in QGIS, at some point we will need some basic geometry uh, supporting 3D. And uh, so we have SF Seagull, uh, who Hugo worked on, and uh, Vincent Mora as well, but who need some huge work as well to be usable. And uh, uh, otherwise, other than that, there is, uh, to my knowledge, no real uh, 3D geometry processing library which we can just plug in and, and use. So that that's, would be a huge work as well, just for low level uh, feature management in 3D. Uh, so that's probably why also uh, now it's more about uh, viewing the data in 3D than uh, dealing with data at the very basis of QGIS in 3D. And then, um, uh, yeah, forgot what I wanted to say. Wow, well, that's a huge effort. So it would be a huge effort. Mm. Okay, I think for those in the Zoom room, I'm we're going to need to close up this session because I need to do a handover of the account to Giovanni. I'm sorry, so uh, uh, I need 15 minutes before the next session starts. So, I, uh, but I think we've got uh, good participation being able to watch the discussion here. Um, anything else we can take back to the mailing list? So, um, thank you, um, Martin, especially for all the cool stuff you've given us so far. <laughs> I think it's going to be a nice uh, crowd pleaser when QGIS 3 comes up. All right.